Yeah. All right. So yeah. So I try. I tried a different approach. I was like, oh, sorry. I'm Catholic, strict Catholic, can't go to other churches. <laughs> I, thought that would, I thought that would get her to back that, the fuck off. That's a good plan, yeah. Well, apparently not, because she was just like, our church is non-denominational. Anyone could join. I was like, no, 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 no. You don't understand. Only my church. <laughs> and she's just like, no, no, you can come. And then, like, she's getting re- Like, this goes on for way too long. She's <laughs> getting ready to just, like, grab my wrist at this stage. And then this total stranger, this guy... Apparently his name was Ken. Shows up out of nowhere. He's like, "Hey you, what are you trying?" He's <laughs> like, "What what are you looking for?" And I was like, "And there's in a cafe." And he was like, "Follow me." <laughs> <And he just laughs> led the way. Just saved my life from a crazy zealot lady. <laughs> that that church is probably that one that did like the fucking sarin gas attacks in like uh, <laughs> the That's subway. Like, yeah, for all I know. <laughs> yeah, but you know, like one thing I will say. That first day totally dispelled the idea that Japanese people are these really shy, quiet people. Like, mm-hmm. it's just not true. Yeah. <laughs> Crazy ladies and everyday heroes walking around the streets of Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I actually do have uh, ready visual components for this one. Go figure. Oh, boy. Yeah. You gotta come up with some visual components for the story time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's hard for me to do that, because I don't know what's coming up. But I did find some pictures of uh, Spittler Woods. Very nice. It's all during the daytime, unfortunately, but... Do some after effects, make it night, uh, day to night. <laughs> yeah. Alright. <laughs> I don't think there's that much blue in Photoshop. <laughs> Alright. So. Uh, yeah, so, uh, you remember what happened last time? Oh god, remind me. So, uh, you guys were heading back to the car, and you got into it, and then, uh, you guys started oh, to feel right. sick. Slenderman. Yeah. How <laughs> the fuck did I forget? So, um, yeah, you guys started to feel sick. You jumped out to try and shoot at him. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. So, that's where we're picking up. So, you jumped okay. out, took cover, tried to shoot at him. When you pulled the trigger, your gun jammed. It didn't work. Um, mm-hmm. at that point, Ryan, or, uh, Terry freaked out. He slammed on the gas and just drove forward into him. And then everyone just blacked out. And that was where we ended. Right. So, you uh, wake up, take off a um, take off a blood point for the day. Yep. You uh, were not actually in that. I mean, you were in sort of a parking lot, but despite passing out for the entire day and losing the blood point for it, you're not ashes right now. Yeah, right. Should be. Am I woken <laughs> up in the same car park? Uh, yes. You, um... In the open? Yeah. You, uh... Wow. You're a, I mean, you're a little ways... You're not fully in the open, but at some point during the day, the sun would have passed overhead and should have shone on you. Yeah. You're in kind of like the woods, basically, on the edge of the park right now. Okay. Um, and you wake up, um with a figure standing over you, and I'm going to need a uh, courage roll. Five. All right. Okay. So, uh, this figure, you um, are right now basically on the verge of frenzy. You're right on the the razor edge of it at this point. And this figure reaches down... Um, he's, it's saying something in a language you can't understand. It sounds just kind of like guttural noises to you. And it starts reaching down oh. and grabbing at you. Uh, are they grabbing, uh, violently, or...? Um, it's pretty violent, yeah. It seems to be trying to get the, uh, the gun that's in your hands, uh, away from you. Oh, well, Okay. I will I will attempt to break free and get a stand up on my own then. Alright, give me a uh, strength plus brawl. 
That is, um, six. All right. All right. So, um, basically you start wrestling around with this guy, and eventually you manage to basically throw him off of you, and then he kind of takes a step back, you're able to get up, and then immediately he starts lunging at you. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> uh, what's this guy look like? Um, it's hard to tell. He seems to be, um... It's not quite the same as, obviously, the shadowy figure that you've been running into now, but it's kind of like that. The shadows seem to be sort of wrapping around him in a way that distorts your view of his face. Um, you can see that his clothes, he looks kind of... Um, kind of ragged, like he's been sleeping rough for a while. Gosh, and he okay. is sort of a big guy. Oh, I see. Well, uh, let's see. Is he lunging from a distance? Will I have time to get grab something out of my coat? Um, he is pretty close to you. If you want to do stuff like that, you probably want to create some more distance between yourself first. Alright, so, uh, try to, uh, dodge his attack if necessary and then back up. Okay. Dexterity plus dodge. Uh, wearing armor, so five. Okay. Yeah. Oh, specialty and evasion, actually. Yeah, you get right out of his way. Nice. Alright, so I'll back up. And uh, I'll point my gun at him whilst uh, reaching into my coat for a stake. Alright. Yeah, um, as you're pulling out the stake, you uh, can see this guy has weird um, claw, and you can claw like features, and he seems to be um, taking on some of the aspects of a wolf. Or a wolf man, as it were. Right, so it's either a gangrel mm -hmm. or a werewolf. <laughs> yeah. Pretty sure werewolf tends to be... Well, werewolf is definitely worse given my current weapon set. <laughs> yeah. Hey. Okay. Actually, gangrels can only turn into, like, n like n natural wolves. They can't turn into bipedal wolves, can they? Yeah, not really. Okay, so it's a werewolf then. Uh, I had best spend a blood point on celerity. Mm-hmm. And attempt to retreat. <laughs> You're not going to spend a point on celerity and then try and negotiate quickly. You can negotiate twice <laughs> per turn. Well, uh, actually, I mean, if possible, I would like to um, announce to it I mean it no harm before trying to run away, basically. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If uh, you said I'm on the edge of the woods, right? Yes. Okay. Um, can I tell which way is out of the woods? Yeah, you're basically. It's sort of like you. You can see the car, um, the parking lot where you are. Um, right. You're just kind of underneath. You were underneath like some overhanging trees from the edge, but you're still basically in the parking lot. Okay. Yeah. So I will run. Like, along the road, out. I will not run deeper into the forest. Okay. So, um, give me a strength plus athletics. That is, uh, six. Okay. Yeah, so you're able to, uh, with your celerity, um, and everything, you start to, uh, outpace him. He kind of chases you for a little while, but seems to give up pretty quick um, once he sees you're just zooming ahead of him. Alright, good. Um, so, as you uh, eventually are able to get away from him, you do it now that you're not directly in combat, you start to notice that... Um, you seem to have these weird burns on you. You just notice as you're kind of slowing around, as, you know, the danger passes, you notice that you 
Anna, you feel hurt, and as you check yourself, like, your arms, you can see that you're covered in these odd burns. Oh, I see. Odd burns. Yeah, <clears throat> so, first things first, uh, you do have one point of aggravated damage on you. Oh, wow, okay. And, um, if you have science or medicine, you can try and make an intelligence plus that skill to try and determine what you can. I do have medicine, randomly, uh, but my intelligence is, <laughs> the overall roll is two. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Wow, Ryan is not very clever. Um, you know it doesn't look like a burn that would be caused by, like, fire, but that's about all that you can tell. There does seem to be something odd about it. All right. And it uh, also doesn't look like the burn that you would probably get from... Like, burn from the sun also kind of looks like fire, because you get set on fire. But it doesn't look like that either. Interesting. Okay. Well. All right, so, uh, first things first. I would like to uh, <laughs> quickly give myself a pop-down, see, is anything missing from what I normally have on my person? Yeah. Um, so you check everything out. Do you want to make sure everything is, I mean, your gun jammed as well. Are you going to make sure everything's functional as, in addition? Yeah. All right. So, yeah, um, you check. Um, first off, give me a perception plus firearms. That is six. A lot of six rolls right here. Kind of ominous, isn't it? Yeah. Well... <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, you check through um, your shotgun, and you're not sure why exactly it jammed. It seems like it just didn't fire for some reason. And as you check um, the rest of the shells, um, none of them seem to be working either. There must be some kind of weird manufacturing flaw in them, um, because none of the gunpowder ignites. Even, like, uh, spreading it out on the ground and, like, setting a flame to it, it just sort of smolders. Jesus. All right. Hmm. Very interesting. Uh, electronics? Does my phone work? Um, yes. As you check your phone, it is entirely blown out. Damn it. I was really... I really wanted to put it in a front pocket and have the camera on. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, for authenticity. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> I see. Um, flashlights? Um, any electronics you had are, like, blown out. Done. Alright. Um, and if you, like, do check... I, do I have my stuff? Um, yes, you do. That is there, and that does function. Thankful. And actually, okay. you rolled high enough on your perception plus firearms that, um, I'm gonna say you thought to check, uh, your handgun as well. Um, and that actually yeah. shows the same weird flaw in the gunpowder, that it won't ignite. Alright, so they're useless. I'll just, um, holster them away then. Grab my big stick. Yeah, I think I'll just have, uh, I'll have my staff in my dominant hand and a wooden stake in the other. Alright. Um, it's also around this time that you start to notice that there is no sign of... Well, you remember at this point, since you've left the car park, but the, the car is completely gone. Yeah. You're basically alone out here. Okay, so... Uh, there's two things I can do now. Uh, this park is quite a ways away from anything, isn't it? Yeah, you drove for like three and a half hours to get out here. <laughs> Great, so if I were to try to um, go back from the park by foot, I would be quite a while. Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see. See, there's a big problem. Mm hmm. Besides all of this situation, there's an additional big problem I have right now. Yeah. I've only got three blood left. Yep, that is a problem. In fact, um, in that case, I'm going to call for another courage roll. Um, because you <laughs> also, in addition to your humanity, you can't roll a virtue higher than your current blood rating. 
So it's in that case, um, my courage is down to max three, I guess. <laughs> All right. Um. So it starts to dawn on you a that you're starving, and b, um, that you know Stephen's gone, Terry's gone, and you're out in the middle of the woods. Yeah. So, at this point, uh, like, basically a red haze just starts to descend over you, and you just flip out. You're not really aware of what happens for a while. When you come to, you find yourself in what looks to be some sort of farmyard area. Um, let me roll to see. All right. So, uh, you have a further eight blood points in you. Oh. Um, and you wake up to, uh, find yourself surrounded by mutilated cattle. Oh, okay. <laughs> you don't know how you got here? You don't really know where you are. Um... But yeah, you're in some sort of barn, surrounded by cattle that something has torn apart. <laughs> something, yeah. Maybe the monster that's been chasing you. <laughs> what was that? Did I lose my weapons this time, or do I still have them somehow? Nope, I mean, you holster them, so they're still attached to you. Thank fuck. So, oh, yeah. as you're kind of coming to your senses, you hear the sounds of, like... Like a door opening and closing, and like some people shouting back to one another, um, about you know checking out what that weird noise was. Obfuscate. All right. So yeah, you see a um, like a farmer come in with his shotgun, and he sees like all of the mess you just made. There's yeah. about a dozen dead cows around at this point. Um, and the room. I mean, you drank part of it, but the room is also just, like, coated in spilt blood. You were not really feeding carefully. Nice. Um. <laughs> it, was it was La Chupacabra, I swear. Yeah. So he looks around, he's like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. And so he, um, basically he pulls out his cell phone and he starts, uh, like, calling for the police and walking back into the house. Oh, one second, I think dinner's ready. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, looks like I'll be eating right after Ryan then. I'll be All back right. in just a second. <laughs> I'm going to switch over to the technical difficulty screen so that when I'm editing this, I have a handy visual uh, clue to identify when to cut stuff out. Let's get back to business. All right. So, obviously, the obfuscate worked and he didn't see me. Yeah. Fantastic. Give me a second. He, uh, he left the premises. Uh, there we go. Yes, he did. All right, well, um... The cows aren't uh, completely drained of blood, are they? Um, they pretty much, they don't have any blood left in them. There's blood on the walls and on the floors and, um, everywhere else, All but... Right. So I can't get a few more drops, now. Not unless you want to spend, like, hours licking the ground of a barn. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, head outside and try to find out where the fuck I am now. All right. So, let's see. Yeah, so, um, you're still, uh, out in the countryside somewhere. You're in a slightly more, uh, civilized area, because you are on a farm, but mm -hmm. there is basically a dirt road leading up to a main road, um, which seems to go off into the distance, but you really, you're completely lost now. You at least had an idea where you were before, but now it's could be anywhere. Yeah, so if I start walking along that road, I won't know which way is just back to the park and which way is out. Yeah. What does my modern insight tell me? Um, 
you're not really sure. Could no be patterns, no. could be one way, could be another. Alright. Let's see. Yeah, I guess there's no, uh... There's no two ways about this, is there? Well, there are two ways, actually, as it turns out. <laughs> Judge face, yeah? Yeah. Damn it. I was just thinking of stealing the farmer's car, but uh, I still don't have any points in drive. <laughs> <laughs> it's number one on my priority list. I understand why. There's no point in being the best in the party at stealing cars if you can't drive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, theoretically you could steal it for someone else to drive it, but, um, that situation hasn't come up yet. No. Well, I mean, it has. Yeah. It wasn't a car, it was a truck, but, uh, you know. <laughs> Okay, so, whatever. I will venture forth. Alright. Which, which Can direction? Can I tell by the stars or any bullshit which way is, like, east Sh and west? Absolutely. Give me an intelligence plus navigation roll. One. Alright. <laughs> you need to go to the right, because that's always the right choice. <laughs> I will go to the right. Alright. So, um, you start just walking down the street. Um, mm -hmm. and eventually, you do see a car in the distance. It's coming, um, towards you. Yeah, that will be the police car, so I will obfuscate <laughs> and get off the road. It actually, um, it actually doesn't have sirens on or anything like that. Um, and, uh, yeah. It's, so it's coming towards you, and you can see that it is some sort of, um, like, pickup truck. It's red. I presume my clothes are covered in blood, though. Um, yes, they are. I will not stop them. You could adjust your obfuscate, though, to hide that. Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. I'll obfuscate myself. <laughs> the answer isn't to, obfuscate. Uh, the answer is obfuscate. I will obfuscate myself to look like... Uh, like my normal self, I'd say. So, like, I look 15. Okay. You know, lost and all the rest. Yeah. It's but clean, not covered in blood. <laughs> yeah, okay. Maybe a little less ugly, too. <laughs> all right. And I will... I'll pull them. All right. Yeah, so he, um, this guy in the pickup kind of goes off to the side of the road, and, um, he looks at you and says, uh, where, where are you going? Back to civilization. Ah. You, uh, <laughs> no destination in mind? Nearest town or village, if that's where you're going. Uh, he says, I'm headed up to Chicago. That's perfect. Alright. Well, he says you're free to hop in if you want. Woo. Thanks, pal. I hope you hop like country there. music. Absolutely. Country <laughs> music is hugely popular in Ireland. <laughs> Alright. So yeah, you uh, hop in. And he was going the opposite direction, so just to make it clear, you were walking... Uh, to the south. <laughs> well, uh, possibly the park, or possibly just, uh, I don't know what the next major city south of uh, Chicago is, but there. <laughs> Nowhere? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I see. So yeah, he turns it on, he turns, uh, yeah, he puts in, uh... Gareth Brooks? Yep, pretty much. Motherfucker wouldn't play in Dublin. <laughs> there was a whole thing about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah.
So yeah, he's got just a series of uh, like CDs of all sorts of the best country hits. Um, nice. Oh yeah. So um, whenever a song comes up that involves a pickup truck in some kind, he does uh, boisterously join in. <laughs> Although he's not very good. Can I get a roll to see if I know the lyrics? Uh, yeah, give me a, um... I wonder if there's some way that you could apply academics as a negative modifier to a roll. <laughs> um, no, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> give me a, uh... Charisma plus performance. Ah, uh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> You've already brought it up now, so it, it has to happen. <laughs> no, 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 it doesn't. Alright, I'm pretty sure it's one, so that's the die I'm gonna roll. Oh, God. Wow, I've never... <laughs> it's actually a botch. Alright, so you, uh... You also, you also boisterously join in. <laughs> and, uh, it doesn't turn out well. Better. No, that should make it better. Yeah, I mean, he doesn't complain, but you're about on par with him, is how I'll put it. Oh, well, that's fine. So, uh, yeah, you guys drive up um, to Chicago. The singing actually does kind of, it starts to calm your nerves a little bit. So, um, you're no longer on the verge of frenzy. And uh, he drops you off. Um, he asks, you know, where in Chicago. He's going to uh, stay with um, some family in the suburbs. But uh, he asks where you'd like you would like to be dropped off. Now, uh, I'm going to get some looks if I tell him Gary, haven't I? Uh, yeah, probably. Uh, can I come up with somewhere that I, that I would get away with that's, like, kind of close to Gary? Um, yeah, you could also, you could, um, ask to be dropped off at, like, a bus station or something that you could then take. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Do I have money? Um. Let's see, yeah, uh, well, you have resources too now, right? Uh, yeah. All right, yeah, you've got enough in your pockets for bus fare. <laughs> I need resources too for that. <laughs> well, it's also you have money, but right now you don't really have access to like any bank accounts or anything like that where you would store your money. But on your person, you probably have enough for anything okay. mundane like this. Oh yeah, I'll ask him to bring me to a bus stop. Alright. And since you're in a, <laughs> I don't assume, uh, Ryan has, like, an ATM machine, uh, card. So. The money is all hidden under your mattress yeah, or I something. Yeah, I think he probably, he probably keeps, uh, cold hard cash in his room. Alright. So yeah, he drops in you fact, off. I, I would say he also, uh, digs holes. By the way. <laughs> So, uh, this guy, he drops you off, and he says, uh, well, you know, good luck on your travels. I'll say thank you very much for all the help. All right. He says, well, see you later. Look me up on Facebook. And he drives away. Do I even know his name? Yeah. Do I have a Facebook? <laughs> I mean, probably, yeah. I'm probably go I'm probably one of those uh, fucking shitty Facebook accounts that doesn't even have a profile picture. Yeah. Yeah, go on, I'll add them. <laughs> well, you're gonna have to wait to get home. Unfortunately, your phone is when still get home. burnt out. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So the bus uh, takes you into Gary. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but uh. Yeah. Can I add a point of contacts? <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, Bert, the pickup guy. Uh, doesn't count as a contact. You can add him to your okay. character sheet, though. Sure. <laughs> you can put down that you owe him a minor boon for driving you into the city. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. <laughs> Alright. So yeah, the bus takes you into Gary, drops you, you stop off at the station nearest the house. You still have, a, like, an hour's walk to get there. Um, but it is manageable walking distance. So right, as but... you, uh, 
as you're walking there, you um, you notice it's pretty much still Gary. Let me switch over from the woods over to Gary. There we go. All right. <clears throat> yeah, it still looks um, pretty much the same as it always did. Run down, shitty. Lots of, uh, uh, you know. Ghost. Home sweet home. Yeah, lots of gangbangers around, and that's about it. Will I mark down Bert's boon as a life boon? <laughs> uh, it's it's really only a minor boon. Minor? Alright. My life's not worth much, I guess. <laughs> That's true. So, um... Yeah. Uh, you eventually hit the mansion itself. How's it look from the outside? Um, alright, so you actually... Um... Yeah, you are probably going to have to break in since uh, <laughs> no one else is with oh you. Oh, God. So it's a good thing that we have all the security systems in a handy Word document. Let me pull that up. Yeah, we know. There is a way in. It's like through that shed. Yeah, there is the secret passage. <clears throat> Thank fuck I know about that. <laughs> well, you dug it, so you have to know about it. <laughs> Unless Steven Unless, uh, uh, dominated Steven, it out uh, of you. Dominated me. Yeah. <laughs> we both went right to the same thing. Yep. <laughs> it's Steven's little mistake rectifier. Something like that. There we go. Higgins Estate. Alright. Yeah, so as you're approaching it, um, you're outside the walls, and it's still got the stone fence. And the, actually, let me switch over to the Haven pictures. Yeah, it's still got the fence, and it's still got the wrought iron gate. The uh, house still looks like it's in fine condition. It hasn't burnt down or anything like that. All right, well, uh, try to get in through the secret stuff. All right, well, first you're going to have to climb the fence, which is a, st a strength plus athletics. Unless oh, you would I, like... I didn't... Unless you would like to try and break through the stone wall, which is a similar but much more difficult role. I did not realize that even the secret entrance had barriers. <laughs> oh, yeah. It has a number of barriers. And if I recall correctly, I instructed Steven to plant... The other side, the inside of the wall with, like, shit. Yes. Hmm. Alright. I will attempt to scale the wall. Alright. So, strength plus athletics? Yep. Six. Alright. So, since you know about it, you're aware that there are, like, some, um, like, spiky, like, uh, very, like, plant vines all around on the other mm -hmm. side. So you basically detect it automatically, but you're now standing on top of the wall looking down at this kind of like minor bramble patch. Alright. I should have said it before I even started, but I should obfuscate. Yeah. Alright. Alright. So I've got a clear, uh, clearing I can land on. Um, you're gonna have to make, um, another, uh, if you wanna, like, try and jump past it, that's gonna be, uh, strength plus flex you just did, so let's do dexterity plus dodge. Five. Yeah, you're able to leap to the other side and kind of roll with the impact, and you're able to get free. Um, a couple of little, like, rambles stag on your clothes, but you're not injured in any way. Cool. And your clothes are already a mess at this point of, like, blood and <laughs> dirt and mud, and they're all, like, torn up anyway, yeah. so... <laughs> That's alright. <clears throat> so... Actually, I yeah. would like... Well, hmm. This is probably a really dumb place to check, but I'm really curious if my guns work now. <laughs> Shoot up in the air, do it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that would set some sort of alarm off. <laughs> um, I once... will press on. 
once you get inside, uh, you do know that Terry does have, like, some uh, gunsmithing equipment and stuff like that. You could take the bullets in there and analyze them to see if they, um, if the gunpowder ignites or not. Alright. <clears throat> in the meantime, uh, yeah. I will have, as, as before, I'll have my staff and stake ready. Okay. So, um, you are going into the, you're using the secret passage? Yes, please. And you know the code, right? <laughs> I can only presume I was taught the code. Um, let me check to see. Should I know it in person as a player? Um, so there is a, no, it's not actually set to a number. I think it's a, right now it's a, a changing code. But basically there is a padlock on the shed door um, set to a code. Let me just check to see who is on the security list if I'm not on this list I'm gonna have it out with Mary <laughs> I would love it if you're not on this list <laughs> the door is kept closed by a small padlock set to a code known by all the three permanent residents yes you do know the code so, Terry, Stephen, and Jonathan, yeah? <laughs> no, permanent residence. Alright, good. I'll get in, then. I'm glad it says specifically the three, because that does mean that uh, if Jonathan and Derek are ever in a similar situation... Uh... <laughs> they don't count. They don't count. Fantastic. Yeah, so you're able to get in. And I will, uh, if possible, whenever possible... I'm sure, like, a, a padlock on the outside of the door isn't really doable, but whenever possible, I will try to lock stuff behind me. Yeah. Once you get inside so, and yeah, can unlock... If, if they are in the situation and I'm already in the house, they're still gonna have to go through all this shit. Alright. Yeah, once you get in, you could go out through, like, the front door and then just re-padlock it. Cool. Yeah. Alright. So, um, you get in, you move the stuff out of the way, you take the, uh... You remove the secret entrance, the, uh, like, the panel over it, mm -hmm. and you drop down into the passage. What I love is right. that <laughs> no one oh else... God. an enclosed passage. Yeah. And there's a slender man of force. <laughs> yeah. So, is, um, um... Are electronics still not working? Um, your phone seems to be, like, completely burnt out, and actually, if you check, like, the batteries on that and your flashlight, it looks like the batteries have actually, like, burst. Fuck me. I'm getting shivers. Alright. Is there lighting in this passage? Um, no there is not. Oh god. Steven was planning on leading you out using his auspects to see in the dark. What? That's a terrible <laughs> plan. <laughs> because presumably anyone coming behind you might not have auspects or protein. Unfortunately... This is the sort of situation where you're going through the passage without Steven. Um, yeah. Okay, wait, 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 wait. <clears throat> okay, I do have a lighter. Yes, you can use that. Does that work? Um, let's see. Um, I hate to say it. But no, uh, I didn't specifically plan for this, but it would not ignite. Yeah. Alright, fair. I tried. Yep. Yeah. That's a good thought. I have a note here, uh, after lighter, it says, in brackets, or flint and steel, which would be less dangerous, because it can't blow up. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Do you have anything that, um, I mean, you can create a spark with that, but do you have anything to, like, set a flame? Specifically, I have... Let's see. So I have bits... I will. I have paper for those pens, right? Yeah, so I have, like, a notebook, right? Uh-huh. So, um... Okay, so the, light, the mechanism of the lighter's not working. Maybe the... Even though... I know the uh, gunpowder isn't working, but maybe the fuel will work. So I guess roll up some sheets of paper and dip them into the lighter fuel. Um... They do, um, ignite, um, but it's, it seems like it's the paper that's, um, igniting, not really the, the lighter fluid. Wow. Alright, so that's not gonna last very well. Whatever. Alright, 
so I'll start lighting bits of fucking paper and try to make my way through this. <laughs> yeah. So, fortunately, it is basically, um... Uh, it's not quite a straight line, but it's basically like an L shape. It's a very simple escape tunnel. Okay. Um... You know, obviously there are plans to put in, like, a full maze down here with booby traps, but that hasn't really come to fruition yet, fortunately for you. Good. Right now, you're starting to uh, notice that, I mean, this is kind of a rush job to build this thing in the first place, and you're not sure exactly how stable these supports that you and Terry put in are, um, but they're holding up so far. And eventually... They're going to collapse, like, <laughs> while I'm here. <laughs> Hopefully not. So what you come... Odds? You come to uh, the secret, the secret wall, and you pass through it into um, the lab underneath the house. Oh my god, I made it! Yes, you did. Oh thank fuck! I was like, I was visual in that fucking tunnel, and it was literally scary. <laughs> <laughs> nah, it seems, it seems as though you've made it to the other side so far. Although, it's not much lighter here in the laboratory, either, and there's all uh, Steven spooky science experiments going on, so it's not really better. Yeah. <clears throat> so, yeah. What do you want to do now? Okay, um, first off, try to find out if there's anyone else here. Okay. So, uh, so, like, that means, um, staying obfuscated and silently inspecting the house. I'm not calling for anyone or giving away my presence. Alright. So as you open the door out of the laboratory, you hear, um, like a sound, kind of like, almost like, uh, sort of a crash coming from upstairs. Okay. So there's my first lead. Alright. Ready my weapons? Head upstairs. So yeah, as you uh, head up the stairs carefully, <laughs> with your quarter staff at the ready, yeah. um, you are looking around until eventually you find the um, in the uh, billiards room, which mm -hmm. is where the crash came from. You kind of peek through the door, and you can see there is someone inside. It's actually Lucy. It's Lucy. Yes, it is. Okay, so... I'm pretty sure Ryan would still be pretty on edge. <laughs> mm-hmm. So... I am going to... Let's see. How do I handle this? I don't obviously cause uh, undue stress on her either. No. Hmm. Oh, I will say, by this point, um... A, your yeah. her presence effect on you has worn off. Oh, okay. Um, on the other hand, because of your derangement, um, she is the first person that you know that you've seen here, yeah. so it it feels pretty much about the same as it did. Yeah, I'd say it still warms my heart quite a lot. To see it. <laughs> uh, I will knock gently on the door. All right. So, um, you see, like, and you're de-obfuscating? No. You're just... <laughs> we're doing some paranormal activity shit here. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, um, she, like, jumps when you... She hears the tapping, and she starts looking around. She says, you know, hello, is anyone there? Yeah, alright, that's all. That seems authentic enough. I'll, I'll drop obfuscating and call out to her. Alright. Yeah, so when she sees you, she immediately runs up, throws her arms around you, gives you several kisses. Um, she's like, I, I was so worried about you, I didn't, you just, you vanished, and then you texted me, and then you just vanished again, yeah. and I couldn't get in contact What's with that? you, I've been sending your phone messages, and you haven't gotten back to me. I need, I need to sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, and are you, like, fully deobfuscated, or... Uh, oh, right. She has... Alright, because I have a fake appearance for her. Um, Although, actually... Yeah, I mean, well, so the the, inf the fat 
the infatuation has dropped, so I guess I won't care about that anymore. So I'll drop it. Alright. Yeah, so she's definitely worried. Yeah, she'll help you to a seat, and she'll be like, oh, let me, um... We should, yeah, sit down, she says. <laughs> Are you hurt? Uh, yeah, a bit. Alright. So she'll she'll basically nurse you. She'll check out the burns. She's like, hmm. She kind of tries to examine it for a little bit. And Never she's, seen anything like this? She's like, these are really odd. They don't look like fire or anything like that, but they, um... I don't know what could have caused something like this. I see. Um, she says we probably should... I don't know if you can get infected, but I've never seen a burn like this. We should probably um, wash down the area, you know, and bandage it. Sure. All right. So she'll um, help you into the uh, the shower. Um, <laughs> strip off all your clothes. She's she's like she thinks about washing them, and then she just like throws them in the trash can at this point. Um, I mean, do vampires necessarily have to do something like this? Um, well, like she said, she doesn't know if you could get infected, but she's never seen a burn like this before, so... Yeah, magic infectors. So, yeah, exactly. That's basically her thought process. Yeah, uh, I'll buy that. It's better to be safe than sorry. Okay. Well, sure. So, yeah, she leaves you to uh, shower yourself, um, and she says she's going to get you... Um, like some clean clothes. Wow, that's surprisingly considerate of her. Yeah. I was expecting this to be one of those fucking Irish tries to get in the shower with you and all the other crap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it can be if you want it to be. Maybe Lucy's not so bad after all. <laughs> She's more worried about you rather than trying to jump your bones right now. Well, that well, so that was the thing. That was kind of a test for me in my head. I was uh, like... Well, she actually didn't come here. Maybe she's actually worried about me. Mm hmm <laughs> Interesting. Noted. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, I'll try to fucking wash the wounds or whatever. Alright. Yeah, so you um, wash up. Presumably at the same time, get all of the gore out of your hair and... Yeah. No, that it. would be a good idea. <laughs> so you, uh, you have to stay in there for a while, like, scrubbing and... Uh, shampooing you do like a couple of you do a couple of soap downs basically um, but eventually okay. you manage to get all of the gore and mud and um, Lucy's kind of sitting there waiting for you um, on the toilet seat she's gotten out like some bandages and things like that um, and like some antiseptic she doesn't really know again she's just gonna try basically any Anything you would try with a mortal for this. Fair. So yeah, once you're out... I'll let her go off this. Yeah, once you're out and dried down, she'll um, basically apply antiseptic, stuff like that, and um, bandage them up. And uh, she's also gotten out some clean clothes. Um, they, uh, they are your clothes. You're not sure exactly... You would never have picked this outfit out for yourself, although it is all made up of your clothes. Um, okay. Is it, like, more fashionable than mo normally? Yeah, it's, pro imagine? it's probably, like, the nicest clothes that you own, which are, like, buried somewhere at, like, the bottom of the pile. Um, but they seem to have right. been, like, ironed and stuff like that. So, um, which is obviously something totally antithetical to your worldview. But, nice. Yeah. So, she says, well, you look much nicer now. Thanks. Where is, um, where are the others at? Well, why don't you, why don't you hear my story? <laughs> Alright, let's, um, let's leave the bathroom first. And she'll, um... Fair. <laughs> she'll take you into, like, the sitting room. Okay. Alright, so, uh... 
And see, I mean, like, this is, we, this is still urgent, since I'm, we should be getting to the bottom of this, so I'll give her the shortest version of this. Alright. So, like, the night before, uh, I don't know, I'm, I've lost track of how many days ago this is, because there was, like, time, you'll see, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I saw, I sensed there was something, and uh, it was some sort of danger. We all panicked, tried to sleep in the same room. We woke up, Jonathan was missing, okay? Tracked him down to a park, went to the park, uh, found a monster, tried to defend ourselves, all got knocked out. I woke up on my own at a car park, got chased by a werewolf. Here I am. Hmm. Well. Hmm. That's not good at all. So you don't know where Jonathan or the others are? <clears throat> So what kind of monster was it, exactly? Uh, let's see. Slender is Slenderman a character? Um, like in this? Yeah, no, you guys... You've heard of Slenderman. Okay, basically Slenderman. No joke. Uh, huh. Well, that's the odd. The resemblance was on Hmm. Well, she says, I don't really know much about it. Um, I did have a, uh, a blood sibling that uh, was convinced that, um, you know, YouTube content creators were the next wave of artists and embraced them solely. Hmm. I see. But I've never really spent much time with the medium. Okay, um, so... Are you suggesting your friend might know something about this? Well, I could try and get in contact with her, I suppose. But I'm not really sure where she nothing. is right now. It's my thought... Do you have a phone number? Um, no, but I could try and contact her on Facebook. Yeah, do that. Please. Right. She says, it's my thought that if this is some kind of supernatural creature, you might want to try and get help from someone else who might know about these things. Um, yeah. And uh, she says, I'm not sure exactly whether or not you think it's a good idea, but um, I do have the address for the Tremere Chantry in Chicago. Well, in theory, assuming Stephen's been keeping his reputation good, they should care if the fa if by the fact that he's missing. Yeah. She says, um, it's well known that, you know, the Tremere all stick by each other, pretty much through thick and thin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's worth a shot. <laughs> um, she says, also, I don't know, but you do, the prince does owe you a boon as well. That's true. So she goes, um, she lets you think about it, and she goes onto her Facebook to try and get in contact with, um, her friend. Okay, so let's see. Modius owns a minor boon. The Prince of Chicago owns a life boon. Yeah. Also, from what you know of Prince Modius, he's not really competent. <laughs> yeah. So, I guess... Let's see. I will try the Tremere. All right. So eventually Lucy comes back. Um, she says that um, her friend's a little bit busy right now, but um, she'll try and uh, Skype with you guys um, in a little bit. All right, close. Um, she asks if there's anyone else you guys want to see in the meantime. The Tremere? All right. She does say that you may want to be careful that they don't try and, you know magic you. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Trust me. So, uh, she gets, like, her coat on and everything. And, uh, she, um, well, at first, she's kind of, uh, she checks the garage, but the car obviously isn't there. There is, uh, Steven's, uh, Porsche in the garage, but 
you have been expressly told never to touch that under any circumstances. Better not touch it then. <laughs> yeah, it's been... You can see, actually, it's been recently fully waxed. Um, you know, the interior has been completely redone. It's, it's really nice, but... When you, uh... Tell Lucy not to touch it, she carefully skirts around it. And then she says, well, do you have another vehicle? I mean, don't we have the arm? Oh, hmm. Didn't we have a third vehicle? Or did... Oh, we have that shit... <laughs> we have that vehicle from the swap still, don't we? Yes, you do have the Stratus. <laughs> we have that. Alright, well... She'll, um, say, do you want to drive, or... Uh, no, you please. Alright, well, she jumps into the driver's seat. Alright, I'll get in the shotgun. Alright. Um, speaking of which, do you, are you taking your guns with you? Oh, god. Completely forgot. Uh, <laughs> I guess uh, I'll hold her, hold her back. I gotta check the gun situation. <laughs> um, well, when you say that, she says, "Oh, um, okay." And she'll yeah, wait there. Sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, I'll just uh, can I check? Can I just check there? Like, is the fire? Are guns working again? Is um, shock? Is uh, gunpowder igniting? Is my lighter working? Um. Everything you try, your lighter um, won't light, um, and the bullets that are in your shotgun, just the gunpowder won't ignite. Okay, so if I try to load it with the stuff in here, though? Yeah, if you reload the gun, um, and you can basically pour out a little gunpowder to check it, um, that does work. Okay, I will... Can I rearm my handgun on shotgun? Absolutely. Uh, so I'm ready now. Do you want to reload your lighter as well? Might as well. All right. Oh, and you said you were going to. Um, do you want to do the padlock as well? On the uh, shed. Yep. All right. So <laughs> you walk <laughs> around for like 20 minutes no, reloading no, guns. No, 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 no. Better not do that. <laughs> are you sure? Well, I mean, are, are Jonathan and uh, Stalworth's character, are they aware of the back entrance? Actually, they are not. Alright, well then there's no point in keeping it unlocked for them, so I'll lock it. Alright. So, you relock it, head back into the car, and, um... Yeah, so Lucy drives you over into uh, Chicago itself. Um, Good. So, she drives you over to the Tremere Chantry, which is, um, it's, uh, it looks just like some sort of, um, kind of like a townhouse, um, in kind of near downtown Chicago, but in one of the areas that seems like it's been there for a while. Like, the city has kind of grown up around it, basically. Okay. Makes sense. So, um, she stops outside and says, this is where, at least, I've heard you're supposed to go when you want to talk with the Tremere. Well, let's give it a shot. Alright. So, get out of the car. Is she coming with? Um, she seems a little nervous. She asks if, um, you want her to come with you. Would you rather stay here? Um, she thinks about it and she's like, no, no, I can, I can go in. Alright. And she gets out of the car and uh, grabs a hold of your arm and stays very close to you as you guys head in. I'm sure I don't need to tell you to not look anyone in the eye. No. No, I'm good. Yes. <laughs> Alright, so you approach. There doesn't seem to be like a doorbell, but there is an antique door knocker affixed to the door. Knock on the door. Alright. So, after uh, a little bit, the door opens, and a elderly uh, 
Chinese gentleman is standing on the other side and he bows to you and says, what business do you have here? I wish to seek advice and, uh, on a problem relevant to the disappearance of the Tremere Stephen Higgins. Alright, so he examines you closely and then he says, please come in. And he takes you into a small sitting room just past the main entrance. Um, he says, please, uh, wait here. Who should I say is, um, calling on the regent this evening? Stephen Higgins's associate, Ryan Farrell. All right. And then Lucy kind of nods her head and says, I'm Lucy Alster of, uh, Clan Trimi uh, Toreador. So, the, uh, Chinese gentleman bows again. He says, please wait here, and then he leaves you guys in this small room. Um, it's set up with, there is a small fire burning um, in a hearth, um, and there's also, like, some big comfy chairs around, um, and there's, like, end tables set up with, um, like, magazines and newspapers on them. <laughs> okay. Uh, do we dare sit down? Um, well, Lucy kind of goes up to one, and she seems to be examining the chair closely, and then kind of touches it really quickly, and then, like, takes her hand away like it's hot or something, and then kind of touches again a little more carefully, and says, it seems okay. Alright, let's try it. Alright. So, she sits down, and nothing seems to happen I'll to her. I'll sit down. Alright. I'll sit down as well. After a little bit, uh, she's at first she's just kind of looking around nervously. Then after a little bit, she starts like pawing through some of the magazines. And uh, yeah, you guys are just left to wait for a little while. Is there anything you want to do? Uh, nah. I'll be like, thanks for all this. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, no, it's no problem. It's, um... Refreshing to have someone who actually gives a shit. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. She yeah, says that's all I got to say. Brian's not a man for words, you know? Yeah, she says they're, they're certainly taking a long time. Do you think they're doing magic preparing, back there? Could be preparing all manner of... They're probably trying to figure out how best to make use of the situation that Steven's in. Hmm. Hmm. She says, oh, um, Tremere have weird ranks, don't they? Do you know what Steven's rank is? Oh, actually, does Ryan? Um, give me a... Hmm. I don't know. What's the role to determine how good of friends you are? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll just Let's say... See. Um, well, okay, one thing I might suggest, uh -huh. uh, if it's not just me being told directly by Steven, maybe give me some sort of perception role to see if I could figure it out from hearing in on other yeah. conversations or something. Give me a perception plus investigation. Seven. Yeah, so he is a... You know that he recently just got promoted, um, and he is a novice of the... I have to look up exactly which circle he's in. He is a novice of the fifth circle of mysteries. Okay, does Ryan know how many circles there are? Absolutely not. It is a fair, would you say it's a fair assumption to say there's seven? <laughs> um, give me a intelligence plus a cult. One. Alright. It actually came up as a seven, which is a success. Uh, you do know that the Tremere <laughs> like their sevens. You're not sure why. Alright. 
you have no notion of the idea of a number of completion, but you do know that they like the number seven. <laughs> I will tell Lu I will tell Lucy as much. Yeah, I'll let her roll just to see. Yeah, well, she kind of brings you up to date a little bit when you mentioned that they love sevens. Um, she mentions that um, seven is a important number of completion in some occult circles, so that could be why they use them so often. Well, well then he's five out of seven, so the third lowest, or the or the uh, fifth highest. <laughs> yeah, she's like, I'm not really sure which way it goes. Who knows? And as I'm you sure guys the are first circle is the best. And as you guys are coming around talking about this, the door opens and a small young boy enters. Like younger than me? Yeah. He looks to be like ten years old, maybe. Well, given my own situation, I know not to uh, think too much of that. Yeah, he's dressed in like a smoking jacket, and he goes over to you guys and he says please is it like a smoking jacket or like a smoking jacket <laughs> it looks like uh like an old fashioned uh outfit like he was okay he looks like he was just chilling out but like in the 1800s nice so he says please follow me and he walks back through I the door he came him. through all right all so right. i'll give lucy a look and follow <laughs> All right, yeah, she stays right next to you, and um, he leads you into the hallway, and then you see, as you come into the hallway, you just see him finishing up a hand sign, and then he takes, he walks up, and he takes the first door, and heads inside. All right, follow him. All right, so you are in what seems to be some sort of office. Um, there are various arcane instruments all around, although this doesn't look like a laboratory, really. Um, there's like a desk. Or like a collection, yeah? Yeah. It, it looks like just kind of decorations and possibly wards of some kind. Um, okay. He, there's a big desk, though, um, and he's got a seat uh, specially lifted up so that he can sit behind it. <laughs> and... Right. Uh, he sits down. There are a bunch of pages spread all over the desk, but they seem to be written in uh, languages that you don't know. Right. A um, little bit of an Irish, no? Um, actually, give me a perception plus uh, alertness. Sure, six. six. All right, you do actually spy one page that is written in Irish. Although, yes. you're going to need to give me an intelligence plus linguistics. <laughs> Two. All right. I have to come up with a weird justification for Ryan, the unionist, knowing Irish. <laughs> so it's like the IRA used it as a code language, so he learns it as a code breaker or something. Excellent. Yeah, you are not familiar... Yeah, actually, that makes sense. There probably were people like that. Yeah. Um, you do definitely recognize it um, as Irish, but you can't read any of it because it looks like it's um, old Irish. It's basically written uh, in, you know, if you ever read, like, Chaucer or something, it's written in, like, that sort of thing, but in Irish rather than English. Right. Interesting. So maybe if you sat down and studied it for hours, you could puzzle out what it means, but... Nice. Okay. So this guy has a amount of learning we've established. All right. So he sits down, looks at the two of you, and then says, Exactly what has happened to uh, novice Higgins? Okay, well... Great, uh, wizards. <laughs> the proper form of address is regent. Thank you very much, regents. Are you familiar with the urban myth of the Slenderman? 
Alright, so he just kind of looks at you, and then he looks over at Lucy, and you can see out of the corner of your eyes she just kind of shrugs. And then he turns back and says, No. Well, you've had an encounter with some sort of supernatural being quite similar to it. And it seems to have the ability to knock people unconscious, and then after has a tendency to transport them somewhere. And they wake up a few days later to find themselves lost. So this is what has happened. This is what has happened to us. All right. So he has. And, uh, he's gotten out yeah. basically a notepad. He's taken notes at this point, so he's got like so temporal dislocation, spatial dislocation. Alright, good, so he's taking me seriously, that's always nice. Yeah. So yeah, I will, I'll, I'll then go into the details of exactly what happened, in what order, etc. Alright, he asks you to describe what it looked like. Uh, I will describe, but I'll also uh, ask Lucy to bring out a phone and All look right. up Slenderman. Yeah, so she brings it up, and she shows it to him, and he nods, and he keeps making notes. And, right. um... So do you uh, do you mention that your burns? Yes. All right. So once you mention that, um, and he finishes your your description of the creature, uh, he asks you to show him the burn marks. I will show him. All right. So he takes a look at it. And he says, "Very interesting." Hmm. That's odd. Well, he looks up at you. He says, "Those are radiation burns." Oh, like gamma? Certainly of some kind, although I can't be exactly sure what. Wow. Okay. Perhaps if you uh, left a sample with us, I could tell you more. <laughs> um, and Lucy, I hope it would not be too rude of me to decline this service. Yeah, Lucy kind of looks at you and sort of nods, very trying to be kind of subtle about this. Um, and... Uh, the boy just, he gives you kind of a smile and says, yes, uh, of course, I understand completely. Good. Well, he says, uh, I am not exactly familiar with what has transpired, though I can uh, tell you more with some study. That is better than nothing. Uh, I, I don't know how your organization works, but would you be interested in offering any assistance in me trying to locate Stephen Higgins? Uh, I will alert uh, any chantries to be uh, on the lookout for him to see if he can be found. Alright, thank you very much. I will also apprise his sire of what has transpired. Brilliant. Inside, I'm thinking that's probably not a good... Yeah, you've actually met his sire. She's come to stay with you a couple of times. Um, okay. What's she like? She's kind of cold. Um, she's, yeah. she's She's scared you, basically. Right, yeah. So I, I, got, the, I got the feeling that this will be looked at as, uh, you know, Stephen failing. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Uh, well, okay, if that's about everything, I guess, um, I'll give him... Oh, so let's see, my phone's not working anymore, so... Let's see, how could I get him to contact me if he finds anything out? Um, Lucy will give him her phone number. Alright, good, if she doesn't mind. So it's no problem. <laughs> and, uh... He takes the phone, and, uh... Yeah. Is there anything else you want to tell him or ask him? Uh, hmm. Any advice on dealing with wearables? <laughs> well, he considers for a moment. Uh, silver is best. The creatures okay. seem to react uh, to it. 
um, avoid them would be another yes. piece of advice. There are, of course, a number of rituals that the Tremere have to deal with them, but uh, I'm afraid novice Higgins would not be uh, high enough rank to know any of them. That's a shame. Silver. Okay, well, good to know. Alright. He nods and says... Yeah, that should be everything, I guess. He says, very well. Um, we will certainly uh, conduct more research and apprise you when we find anything. I will uh, note the favor that you owe us. Very good, of course. He takes out a separate leather-bound journal and writes down uh, your name in it, and next to it is written uh, Major Boone. Fair. All right, well, he bows and says, uh, you are free to uh, come to the Chantry and enjoy our hospitality whenever you would like. And he has the Chinese gentleman escort you back into the the entrance area. All right, let's, let's get out of here, then. All right. So as soon as you guys are outside, Lucy's like, that place is spooky. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> let's let's never go back there. <laughs> Until they call me. <laughs> yeah, well, call me, actually. She doesn't seem exactly <laughs> pleased by that notion. Um, I, I, I tell her straight. All right. She says, uh, you know, Stephen seems a lot nicer than them. So he hangs out with me. Yeah, I, I mean, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she gets into the car and asks if there's anywhere else you want her to drive you. Uh, well, I need silver bullets. <laughs> yeah. Where can I get silver bullets? Well, she does say that you could always try and make the ammunition yourself, or, you know, ask a friend to do it. Although that would still require getting silver. Well, I don't have the skills, but perhaps the Prince of Chicago would have the resources. <laughs> Give me silver, bitch. Yo, need silver bullets. <laughs> Basically. Uh, is that an efficient use of time? Maybe I should just be heading to the park gate, so... Um... I mean, I am going back to the park. <laughs> Alright. Well, when Lucy hears that's your plan, she asks, um, for God's sake, why? Because my friends are there. Well, I thought they weren't there, though. Well, we all passed out, but I woke up still there. Yeah. For all I know, they're still disappeared, but when they wake up, they'll probably wake up in that park. Well, the car disappeared too, right? The car did disappear. So maybe they have the car. Maybe they got separated from you because you got out. Do you have Steven's number? She says, I do. It's a long shot, but try it. Alright. So Probably she... Probably be blown like mine. Yeah, she tries to get in contact with him, but... Yeah, there's no response. She says it is pretty much like yours. Uh, just to be sure, I'll ask her to check all the other numbers, you know. Yeah. Jonathan. Yeah, it's the same for basically everyone who was there. Okay, fair. Let's see. Although Jonathan's phone was in Steven's possession at the time because of the the time thing. Sure. God knows where Jonathan okay. is. <laughs> okay, so so I'm waiting on expert advice from the Tremere. Mm-hmm. I want them silver bullets, though. <laughs> well, 
she says you could at least get silver so that when maybe your friends come back, maybe they can know how to make silver bullets. Get some silver then. All right. Um. Well, she does know a couple of like jewelry stores you could go to. All right, try it out. Yeah. So she takes you around. Um. And um, you're able to buy. Not, you know, an extraordinary amount of silver on your allowance, but enough to probably, after you melt it down, make maybe like a clip. Alright, that's something. Alright. And, um... As you're kind of, you know, sitting in the car thinking about things, you start to feel um, a little bit weird. Not quite sick the same way you were before, um, but a little bit lightheaded. Oh, gosh. So, um, then you hear... Uh, uh, <clears throat> then you hear yeah. a, a man ask you uh, if you're all right. I hear a man ask me? Yeah. Who is this man? Oh, wait, let me uh, switch the image over for this. Uh, I, I can't have the stream up on my tablet. I don't know what the image is going to be, damn it. <laughs> You're going to have to watch the YouTube video later. Looks okay. like. Oh, I forgot to uh, show Nikolai. Alright. So. You look over and there is uh, a man sitting there. And he looks really familiar to you. And he says, You all right, David? <laughs> is that, uh, sir? Uh, yeah, it is your sire. And, uh, by the way, he did, uh, refer to you as David for some reason. That was very weird. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll be like, sir? Says, can't have you be getting sick now. Uh, we got a job to do. What's the what job? What's the job? Job we're doing right now. And he uh, points to your lap, where you can see you have what seems to be a triggering device, um, for something. Given your background, probably a bomb. Um, absolutely not. Uh, you can't see oh, the image gosh. right now, but um, I would give you a hint as to where you are. Uh, it looks like a city of some kind. It looks familiar. Maybe Belfast. Yeah, as you're um, looking around, you can see you're actually outside of what looks to be um, a church of some kind. Oh, God. Uh, is this situation ringing any bells right now, or do I not remember what this time is? Yeah, you have no idea. This seems like a completely new memory or something. Oh. Well, okay. I'll you remember? Sir and say, uh, uh, tell me what I was supposed to do. Says, well, David, we made the delivery. Now it's about time we get out of here, don't you think? I. All right. So he <laughs> gets out of the car, and as you're getting out, you start to feel like a tickle in the back of your throat, and you kind of have a cough a few times. And he, I start, I start coughing. Yep. Yeah, so he looks over at you as you're getting out of the car and says, "It's because you don't eat well, and too many long nights." why you're getting these colds. Hmm. Yeah, sure. Is the coughing stopping? Um, it, uh, it, you, it does for a little bit, um, and then it seems to get, you think you're okay, and then it starts to get worse, and you also start to feel like you might get sick. <laughs> uh, well, I'm holding a triggering device on me right now. Perhaps I should <laughs> try to hand it over to her. Uh, Sir just smiles at you and says, "No, this is this is your job, boyo." 
<laughs> okay, well, I'll try to keep getting away then. Alright. So yeah, you guys are walking away from this uh, church. It actually, you do kind of recognize the church. Um, it is a, a church that... It is the, the Anglican church that you and... Uh, you remember, like, going to as a child growing up. Oh. That's us. Yeah, it's a little way you don't... Why would I be about to blow up an Anglican church? Yeah, you do remember that something did happen to it, but, um... You don't really remember what exactly. So yeah, Sir kind of takes you by the shoulder, and when he sees you're, you know... He kind of hauls Sir? you away. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Hmm. Seem to have lost David. How about now? Uh, it looks like you're muted. Or... deafened. Hello? Can Hello? you hear me now? Uh, okay. Yeah. I accidentally touched the mute button on the tablet, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, touch screens and I don't get along. Alright, so... Okay, so... The thing I said was, why, why would we be blowing up an Anglican church? Yeah. So, you do remember that something weird happened, um, to the church. You don't really remember what happened. Um, mm. and when he sees that you're, you know, having a coughing fit, Sir kind of hauls you up by the shoulder and drags you away. Across the street. Okay, sure. Yep, yeah, and, um... Once you're there, he turns to you and says, All right, let's do this. Hi, sir. All right. I'll pull the trigger. All right. So uh, you pull the trigger, and uh car explodes. Like, huge fireball goes up. Uh, the church is, you know, severely damaged, uh, and it seems to have been set on fire by the explosion. And, uh... Sir kind of chuckles, watching the spectacle, and turns to you and says, Good work there, boy -o. And then he looks over to the side and says, Seems we have a uh, witness. I'll, I'll look over there. Who's there? Yeah, there seems to be a weird figure way off in the distance. Oh, God. And, uh, yeah, it's... Seems like a weird, tall, dark figure just standing <laughs> at the end of the street. I see. Uh, I'll look to Sir. What do we do? Says, I don't know. Why don't you go and talk to him? Uh, I'd rather not. Well, seems like he's after you, though, don't it, boyo? Ah, it does seem that way, sir. <laughs> so, uh, you s are racked with, like, a huge coughing fit. You do actually, um, start to throw up. And, uh, oh, when God. you come back to your senses, you find that you're just sitting in the car, coughing. I'm back in the car with Lucy. Yeah. Lucy is actually just getting into the car. Okay, have I... 
So, serious question. Has Ryan seen Marvel Hornets? Um. So, I would say you have uh, probably seen it. Um, how well you, you know, remember everything, you know, you may want to take a refresher course on it, but you're, you're familiar with the basic concept. With your intelligence, okay, so... I'm not sure you solved any of To The Ark's, uh, <laughs> puzzles. <laughs> well, no, no, well, so that aside, though, I'm, so Ryan would then be familiar with the idea that people start copying when he's around? Um, yes, the, the notion that, uh... Of coughing around the creature, yeah. Okay, Lucy, drive quickly. All right. So she starts to drive. Says, "Are you okay?" Very quickly, get out of here. All right. So she starts driving as quickly as she dares. You know, she's she's kind of a timid driver, um, but she is going, you know, five miles above the speed limit. Uh, uh, I, I look out the windows and behind the car, and I'll. Do I spot him? Uh, no, you don't see... You don't see anything. Is the coughing stopping? Uh, yeah, it seems like you're feeling better now. She says, what is it? You know, what, what happened? Was someone following us? Uh... Uh, it, it was near. The thing. Oh. Well, that's not good. No, it's not. I thought it was in the woods. Well, I mean, it got us while we were in the house. Well, that's so... not good. No, it's not. Did we drive away from it? Seems like it. Well, that is good. <laughs> that is good. Where do we go? Is it almost dawn? Um, you've got uh, a couple of hours before dawn if you want to do something else. And actually, I am going to give you a chance to think about it because I have to use the restroom real quick. Okay, sure. And I'm going to switch over to uh, Nikolai's picture since I forgot to put that up before. And uh, I'll be back in a bit. Sure. I'm back. Ryan has a cunning plan. All right. Run to the prince for help. <laughs> All right. So, basically, uh huh. From uh, Ryan's surface level knowledge of Marble Harness, mm -hmm. he should be familiar with the idea that the creature seems, at least, to be. Uh, averse to appearing in front of a very large population. Mm-hmm. Like, he likes to get people on their own. Yeah. So, basically... Ask the prince for some sort of shelter that would have a lot of people in it. All right. So like, you know, come, come basically come to him begging for protection. Mm-hmm. And, uh, if that protection could involve uh, sharing a room with a lot of people, that would be nice. Okay. Yeah, so... Still okay. Yeah, so you drive over to, um, the, uh, the Prince's Haven, uh, his public haven in the Sears Tower. And, uh, you talk with the doorman, who is, uh, well, it's the same doorman as it was in the, uh, the 60s, but he's now, like, super old and decrepit. So there's this nice. old-ass man who asks, uh, you know, what you're, what you're here for. Uh, to... Wait, is this a vampire guard, or like... No, he's, uh... He seems to be immortal, from what you know. I'm here to meet a prince. Alright, where... Where are you going? 
Uh, do I know where the prince is, right? Uh, yeah, you know the Princess Haven. Oh uh, yeah, I'll go in there. All right. So he um basically contacts people upstairs, and then he's like, "All right." So he motions you through into the elevator, which takes you up near the top floor, though not quite to the top floor. Okay. And you are, when the door opens, you are greeted by... Son of a... <laughs> uh, this guy, you can't see the picture, but um, you might reckon, the viewers might recognize him. So, when the door opens, there's this uh, gentleman in a suit there to greet you. And he says, uh, Hello, my name is Mr. Quinn, Mr. Heath Quinn. Perhaps, uh, you would be good enough to tell me who you are and why you are here. Okay, this is this guy a vampire? Um, he seems odd, although you don't have aura perception, so you can't really tell for sure. I look at Lucy. Um, she kind of shrugs her shoulders. Uh, well, what's the prince's, like, actual name? Uh, the prince's name is Loden. I'm here to see Loden. Ah, well, we see, that is where we have a bit of a problem. You see, Loden is not available at the current moment. How unavailable? Completely unavailable. Unavailable to persons to whom he owes a life boom? Unfortunately, he is completely unavailable to everyone. I am his personal secretary, Mr. Quinn. Mr. Heath Quinn, as it turns out. Uh, perhaps I could assist you. Very well, then. I have a request to make of him. I see. And what is the nature of this request? Being haunted by a creature at the moment, I would like uh, somewhere... Secure stay. I understand. Unfortunately, with a lot of uh, other people. Uh, I see. I do not believe we have anything available at the current moment. And you, if you are hunted, you are not permitted to stay here. I am afraid. Uh, are you perhaps a member of Clan Ventru? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um. Lucy whispers in your ear that she's not sure it's a good idea to lie. Absolutely not. <laughs> do you say absolutely not, or do you follow up with just absolutely not? <laughs> I'll be like, uh, yeah, sure. The second <laughs> one. Ah. So he kind of nods and says, yes, I understand. Um, in that case... Uh, I can attempt to arrange something, but I will have to wait for the prince to be back. He is currently indisposed. Um, I will make an appointment for you. May you, uh, will you be free to return in one week's time? <laughs> no. I will be dead. He <laughs> says, well, that's most unfortunate. Um, most unfortunate, indeed. I will have to make myself a here. Uh, well, he says, perhaps I can make a few calls. Please remain here. Don't step out of the elevator, Thanks. please. And he All goes right. to the side and he makes some phone calls. And, uh, he comes back and says, uh, we can arrange for a, uh, safe house for you. Where? Where? Uh, it's a little ways out of the city. Uh, very, uh, remote, very protected. You should be, uh, remote? fully secure there. Remote, right? Yes. As in, there will be no one else there? Uh, there are a number of ghouls who oversee the property. I see. Three of them, fully combat trained, and uh, they are armed with silver ammunition if it is werewolves that are troubling you. Hmm. Hmm. Is uh, something more uh, 
Ethereal. I see. Well, unfortunately, we don't really have any ethereal safe houses. Hmm. Would these girls be open to instruction? Uh, they take instruction perfectly. Alright, tell me where this place is. Um, Lucy will kind of say, uh, can we have a moment? And she steps back in the elevator and she hits the close door button to give you guys some privacy. Alright, I talked to her, yeah, what's up? It's like, so what exactly, I don't think going rural is a good idea. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Basically, I thought maybe I could get the tree them to, like, stay, like, in the room. Yeah. Like, it's, it, like, you know, it's, like, the immediate area that matters, you know? Mm-hmm. Although... I get where you're going with, though, with the rural thing. Yeah, from what I understand, you were attacked with a group larger than we would have there. Weren't there, like, four of you when you were attacked in the in car? In the car? There was three, wasn't there? Was there four? Uh, Derek was there also. Oh god, yeah, okay, we're just... <laughs> yeah, you're right, that wouldn't be high enough numbers at all. At all. It seems like, she says, unfortunately, with the numbers we need, it also kind of precludes a, a vampire havening there. Problem in it. It doesn't seem good. Seems very bad, Lucy. Also, she says, I don't really know for certain, but I don't have a good feeling about this Heath Quinn guy. Yeah, he's kind of a cons. Yeah. We're fine, we'll turn him down, but like, what do we do next? Um, that, she says, I don't really know. Anyway, open you. Let's just get rid of this guy. So, uh, he's standing on the other side, he's like, I could hear you. <laughs> All right. Well then, you know that we are not interested in your offer. Thank you very much for trying, though. Yes, of course. Bye -bye. I am at your disposal, of course. And he nods and he goes back inside. And you guys can take the elevator back down. Okay, take the elevator down. When the elevator door opens, is the Slenderman there? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. I want to I wanna get across the fact that Ryan is fully expecting him every time any door opens. <laughs> Alright. You can be He's fully ex- you can, <laughs> you can be fully expecting him, but you'll probably still freak the fuck out if you just open the door and he's there. <laughs> no, I'm not trying- I'm not trying to insinuate that Ryan no. would feel yeah. prepared when he shows up. What I'm <laughs> saying is Ryan's paranoid as fuck right now. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> so, um, Lucy does say that, um, her friend might be available on Skype pretty soon. Okay. Let's see. Why don't we find, like, a cafe or something that's open to talk with her? That'll be public, a public space. Um, it is pretty hard, because it is around, like, 4 o'clock in the morning at this point. Um, is there any 24-7 places? You can, uh, eventually find one, yeah. Alright, cool. So, Lucy uh, brought her laptop with her, so you can set that up. Okay. And, uh, fortunately, you don't have to worry about being overheard, because this place is basically dead. Um, there's just the one guy... That's, that's, uh, that is unfortunate. There's just the one guy in the back who is on, like, hour 20 of his, like, League of Legends uh, pro gaming session. What a hero. <laughs> it's just like empty cup of noodles like all around him. Dozens Not all of heroes wear cakes. <laughs> dozens of Red Bull cans. <laughs> uh but yeah, aside from him, the place is empty. Okay, well, that's not what I was hoping, but whatever. So, uh she opens up and you uh make the call with Skype. It takes a long time to get to set up because obviously um, Skype is 
doesn't work. But uh, eventually, <laughs> uh, Lucy makes her intelligence plus computers roll and uh, gets the call to connect. All right, goes. So on the other side, uh, you get um, you have a an image pops up of a very um, uh, eccentric looking uh, older woman. Um, she looks to be in like her uh, in her forties, and she's got like big round uh, like thick glasses on and weird uh, like almost eighties style uh, puffed up hair. Nice. And she says, uh, darling, I understand you wanted to, uh, consult with me about something. And, uh, Lucy nods and says, yes, um, my friend, uh, Ryan has been having some problems and he wanted, he thought maybe you could help him. And so she kind of makes room for you. Um. All right. person on the other side says, yes, of course, darling, whatever you need, uh, what is it I could help you with? Okay, so I'll step forward like, uh, how are you doing? <laughs> Name's Ryan. <laughs> and, uh, I heard that you have an interest in, uh, famous <laughs> YouTube video producers. Yes, of course. I've had my eye on a number of them. Okay, so, uh, the words Marvel Hornets probably mean something to you. <laughs> Ah, yes, of course, I'm quite familiar with it. It is uh, an early uh, example, but uh, very, very interesting. Of course, they're much too uh, famous in a, in a broader sense uh, to embrace, of course. Uh, in general, I prefer to only embrace those with less than a thousand subscribers. Okay, that could work too. So, um, would you be familiar, in any case, with, uh, the Slenderman myth? Oh, of course, darling. Okay. So, what if I told you there is a creature quite similar to him? Like, really? Hmm, it's certainly odd. Hmm, not something, uh... I've ever heard of before, although I suppose it is always possible. After all, the book Dracula is found in any library. There could be some basis, in fact, for the uh, story. Alright, well, I've had an encounter with it. <laughs> hmm, very uh, disconcerting. Yep. I would like to know what to do, <laughs> and uh, unless she interrupts, I'll give her the gist of how things have gone. Alright. Yeah, so she uh, listens to the whole thing and says, that's certainly very, um, unfortunate. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what to do in such a circumstance. It is odd, though. You, uh, have described, uh, a feeling of nausea when the creature approaches. Yes. Hmm, interesting. Uh, from what I understand, uh, he's supposed to create a feeling of drowning according to the, uh, original production. So, mm. it does seem as though the uh, individuals responsible for Marble Horns did not have any supernatural understanding of the creature, merely what could be noticed by observation and thus passed down in legend. Okay. So you should be prepared for the fact that this uh, may not have a 100% similarity to any right. stories you may have heard, just as we are not affected by garlic or running water or etc, etc, etc. Because I did, I did have one specific question about, mm -hmm. uh, what do you think, uh, possibly is that their, that medicine they use throughout the show might work as well? 
Yes, they did uh, have some sort of medication which seemed to repel the creature, or at least uh, give resistance to it. Uh, they didn't actually explain in the show what it was, did they? Unfortunately, no. It was never explained what it was. Um, which would make it difficult to get a hold of. And at any mm -hmm. rate, it may simply have been a plot device. Mm. So, is there anything else you want to ask her? Ugh. I mean... If this were one of your web series, what do you think a character in my situation would do? Hmm... Well, in web series, as usually, you have months between updates, so you have plenty of time to think about what to do next. Hmm... This all seems rather well, sudden. I guess that's reassuring. Yes, it, it may be that it leaves you alone for some time. Or maybe not. Maybe not. It doesn't seem that way. I can certainly conduct some research with my <clears throat> little friends. Uh, please, please do. Of course. And, uh, Lucy, I take it that the uh, little matter that we uh, discussed uh, in Detroit is taken care of. And uh, Lucy nods and says, yes, uh, of course, I, I consider us to be completely even. So, uh, the woman on the other end nods and says, Yes, very well, I will, uh, get in contact with you soon, if you're still alive. <laughs> Thanks. Good luck. Thank you. You may wish to, uh, consider recording yourself, uh, at all times, perhaps even when you're asleep, although that didn't seem to help anything, but that is what everyone seems to do once they notice Slenderman. That is what they seem to do, yes. Might be worth something. Well, good luck. Yeah. Bye-bye. Alright. If I were really clever, I would have uh, rigged up the uh, ending uh, Skype call sound, but... I didn't think of it. <laughs> you can you can edit it in post. Yeah. I think we'll close out this conversation. <laughs> I think we both know I'm not gonna do that and this conversation is gonna appear <laughs> verbatim. <laughs> if you were going to do that you wouldn't have brought it up. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Although it might be even funnier if you did edit in the sound but then still left <laughs> us in talking about <laughs> Anyway. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, I, that was, like, the first thing I thought of was the camera thing. There I is mean, also a text message that comes up um, not long after the Skype is over. It says, oh, uh, BTW, uh, sometimes Slenderman has uh, mortal, in some stories, Slenderman has mortal associates um, working for or with him or at least uh, alongside him in some way. Um, you should be careful. That is true. I mean, from the looks of it, he might have werewolf associates. Yeah. That would certainly be even worse. That would be so much worse. <laughs> really need that silver. <laughs> is there any way... <laughs> what, what silver did I get? Like, chains? Yeah, pretty much. You're gonna have to. You think if I wrap, you're gonna you think have if I wrap the chains around my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I actually that might work. I mean, it's better they're not doing anything right now until I can find a way to melt them anyway. That's true. Because I was thinking, you know, the bullets will be very tricky because you know you have to get them the right size. You couldn't just yeah. dip an oil bullet in the silver because then they'd be too big for the gun. But like, yeah. you could just dip dip the stuff and coat it in the silver. So you could do that. Yeah. So. I can't melt them, so I'll wrap them around the staff or somehow try to attach them. Alright. You can make that crafts roll, uh, 
tomorrow night. <laughs> Alright, Chris. Alright, so at this point, it is very near dawn. Where do we stay, Lucy? Um, well, Lucy says You might be best off just getting away from me, to be honest. Um, she's like, well, I don't want to leave you alone. Yeah, but you're putting yourself in danger. She's like, yeah, I know. And she kind of gives you a little hug. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan hugs back. So she says, I, I do think that we should probably try and keep uh, Alicia out of this. Um, so maybe yeah, we should... not drag more people into it. Yeah, so maybe we should go back to the mansion? I guess. I mean, if any of the other guys escape like I did, that's where they'd go. That's true. We should be waiting there for them. If we can get in contact with Steven, maybe he'd know the most of us. Yeah. All right. Well, I think it's a good idea. Okay, yeah, back to the mansion then. All right. So she drives you guys back to the mansion, and um, as you are kind of driving, you start to um, you feel tired. Like you get the the lethargy of the day seems to be setting in on you, although the sun isn't up yet. It's odd, but you kind of start to doze off. Uh, I look to Lucy. Is, does she look tired? Um, you kind of look over, and it's not Lucy that's next to you. Oh god, who is? Um, it's your mother. Where am I now? Uh, you look around, and you're in your bedroom. Your childhood bedroom. Book safe. So, um, she, uh, sets down, like, a pan next to you and says, if you feel sick again, um, you know, throw up into that. And she looks extremely tired. Okay, I'll tell her thanks. Alright, she leans down, kisses you on the top of the head, and then she walks out of the room, closes the door behind her. And so not long after she leaves, you do have uh, a coughing fit. Oh god. <laughs> uh, are the lights on in my room? Um, no, they're they're turned off, although there is a nightlight. <laughs> I turned that nightlight on. <laughs> yeah, the nightlight is already on. It's a little bird. Okay. <laughs> I... I want to fuck. I attempt to run out of the room. Alright. Yeah, you open the door... Well, there are two doors. There's the door into your closet, and then there's the door out into the house. Which one do you want to, uh, use? <laughs> that was just the house! <laughs> <laughs> Alright. You come out through the closet door. You open the door, and it's the room. You're looking at the room itself, but from the perspective of the closet. I go back into the closet. All right. Close yeah, the door. You try and go through the closet. You look out through the the perspective of your room from the other side. You, the room just repeats on itself and you can see yourself looking through the room off oh, into gosh. infinity. I see. Well, that's not nice. Uh, no. It, it's definitely not. Can I turn on the big lights in the room? <laughs> Alright, yeah, you try and uh, flip the switch, and it does turn on for only a second, but then the, uh, the bulb blows. Is there a window in my room? Uh, yeah. So as you look outside, um, you have another coughing fit, but you can see there seems to be a figure standing out on the street just in front of the house. Oh, really? Yeah. Is it a tall figure? Uh, yeah, it's tall and dark, and it seems to be looking directly at your window. Fuck my life. Did I ever mention I'm really weak to Slender Man? Like, this is actually giving me the creeps. <laughs> <laughs> Good, it puts you in character. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know what to do other than try to run out the door repeatedly like a maniac. Yeah. 
at this point, I will note that you are uh, in, like, the body and sort of mindset of a, like, grade school age Ryan. Someone just flipping the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, not good. So yeah, um, trying to escape just keeps sending you back into the same room. And um, as you're doing this, the feeling of sickness gets worse. Like, you feel like you're going to definitely throw up. Well, let's not do with sit and wait for death. Alright, yeah. So you uh, sit on the bed, and after uh, a little while, you know, you... You do basically have to throw up into the pan. You basically puke your guts out for a while, and when you look up, um, the figure is in the room with you, standing at the foot of the bed that you're on. Um, it looks directly at you, and there is an intense ringing in your ears, and another coughing fit, and then you're back in the car. Is Lucy there? Uh, Lucy's there, yeah. You're just driving. Is she okay? Yeah. She looks over at you, and she's like, you're coughing, are you okay, is this, is he here? And she starts looking around. Are we still driving right now? Uh, yeah, you are in Gary at this point. Just, just keep driving. Alright. So she, uh, you know, puts down the pedal a little further, and she's going like six or seven miles above the speed limit now. And, uh... It's, uh, it's giving me some sort of nightmare, nightmares and... Well, I guess that's better than killing you outright. Yeah. So, yeah. She, <laughs> she takes you back into the mansion itself, um, parks the car and everything. And um, asks, when you guys are inside, she asks if Steven has any, like, magic protection to use on the house. I was thinking the, I was actually just thinking the same thing. Well, uh, does does Steven have any sort of like physical or mechanical type ward stuff that I could do? Um, you've never seen anything like it. If he does have it, um, you think it would probably either be in his office or on the like uh, upper floors or in the basement laboratory. Okay, that's true. Okay, so Ryan does know that his office and the laboratory are, if I recall correctly, the most warded rooms. Yes. Okay. Well, what room did we all hide in last time when we all got kidnapped? The basement. Alright, well, we'll try the office then. Alright. Um, the office is, like, fully locked and barred down. Um, it's actually got a security door on it, and the walls around it have been reinforced. Um, you're really not sure. You could try and pick the lock to get in. Um, but yeah, this thing seems heavy-duty. Oh, God. I know it's already gone into the basement. Yes. There's just no points. Mm-hmm. Fuck's sake. All right, what about Steven's bedroom? Uh, yeah, that... It looks completely unsecured when you go in, although there are um, some, like, arcane markings around um, the... There is, like, a sliding door that goes onto the balcony of the house. Um, and there are, like, arcane markings etched into, like, the frame around it. Alright, better than nothing. So, pop down the hatches in this room. Alright. So, um, there is a nice, there's, a, like, a big four-poster bed, um, that Steven sleeps in. Um, it's not your, it's not your water bed, but, um, Lucy kind of gets on it and feels it a bit, and then kind of bounces up and down on it. Just like, this is nice. It is. Maybe we'll be able to sleep. Alright. So, um, she kind of tucks the curtains closed around you. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty near daytime at this point. Um, give me a second. And, um, so you guys are laying down, and it's, like I said, you've got, you know, like, 
a little bit of time, like 20 or 30 minutes before the sun is actually up and forces you to sleep. So, um, you guys are in the bed, then Lucy kind of curls up next to you and says, do you think it's, think it's here? I'm not feeling this. Well, that's good. That is good. That's one thing that's good. Alright. So she, um, stays there for a while, and she's like, you know, I've never really done anything scary before. I mean, well, you think... pretty scary. You'd think meeting vampires would be scary, but actually my sire was really nice. Look at you. So, um... At first she's, like, really scared and kind of keeps looking around, but then after, like, you know, five minutes of nothing happening, um, she starts to relax. Well, Ryan's not relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, she's like, well, it seems like we have a little bit of time before morning. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> she's Ryan like, well, is not in the mood. She's like, you know, I mean... What else are we going to do? I mean, I, I don't want to, you know, be like kind of a doomsayer, but it feels like if it does show up, there's not too much that we could do to stop it. <laughs> All right, I think Ryan will just throw his hands up in here. Fuck it, will relax me for a while. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, she, um, she basically starts uh, kissing you. She climbs on top of you. And, um, basically, she undresses, she undresses you, and, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, she goes, she goes at it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Looks like, here we go. From what you've heard, vampires aren't supposed to really enjoy sex the same way that humans do, but, um, uh, she definitely seems to. Uh, are you going oh, to, for her? are you going to spend the blood point to, um, activate yourself? <laughs> are you serious? Is that a mechanic? Yes, it is. It, you are required well, to spend a blood move, point. That's how you do it. Yeah, you are required to spend a blood point to uh, achieve an erection. That's hilarious. <laughs> I know, I love it. Holy fucking shit. Sure. <laughs> Alright, yeah. Well, she seems appreciative. And, um... Are my physical stats high enough? Should I buff those as well? <laughs> if you want to. Um... And well, as, definitely stamina. <laughs> as you guys are going at it, um, she says, I don't know if, you know, we're going to live or not, but I want to, um, I want to feel you inside me in a different way. And she, uh, bites, oh, she bites at her wrist, and some blood wells up, and she offers it to uh -huh. you. Uh, she's, uh, she, there's no way she's not already blood bonded. There's... This is such a scam. Mm hmm. Pretty sure Ryan wants to do it anyway, though, so I better let him. Alright. Yep, yeah, so you, uh. Yeah, you take a drink of her blood, and she takes a drink of yours as well, and you, uh, feel the most incredible sensation. Um, you weren't that interested in the sex, really, up until this point. Um, but as you're feeding, Same. as you simultaneously are feeding on Vampiric Vitae and having the pleasure of the vampire kiss at the same time, uh, it's a very intense experience. Mm. So, you guys uh, are like that for several minutes, and uh, exchanging blood between you. And uh, when you guys are finished, you are uh, worn out, but uh, if you are down any willpower uh, points, um, they are restored to full. Oh. Wow. Yeah, this was the best orgasm you've ever had. Is that also an actual mechanic? Um, yes, it is, actually. It's not uh, in the ro rule book, but there are a couple of uh, circumstances where they bring it up as a possible consequence. That's hilarious. And also useful. Yeah, it is, actually. Um... Suffice to say, you feel... I mean, you were already kind of fond of her, but you feel uh, a very strong fondness for her now. 
Yeah. Oh, I should probably make I should make note of the. Boss. Yeah. Okay. So, um, basically, when you guys are finished, uh, you guys are laying naked together in the afterglow, and she's like, "Wow, that was um, that was pretty incredible." That was something. She, uh, something good. <laughs> she uh, leans in close and she says, "You know, I don't know." this is really the right time to say it, but uh, I think I'm in love with you, Ryan Farrell. Oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> really? You do it once? <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys have been Dude, together for a while at this point. Oh, she's a clinger, though. Yeah? I mean, like, uh... And also, uh, if you might recall from your uh, Psychology 101 classes, uh, danger can create a feeling of intimacy. In Psychology like 102, women cling really quickly. <laughs> it's a reaction to the stress. Uh-huh. I mean, maybe previous wholesome Ryan, but not fucking maniac murderer Ryan. That's true. Anyway, well, so you guys are just kind of laying there, and um, well, I better come up with a response for Ryan to give her <laughs> after that. <laughs> oh, let me grab my coin. <laughs> Let's see. He's got one point of blood bond, and she's the only character who's shown genuine concern for him besides the main player characters. <laughs> We're all he missing. Feels something tales he just tells her. All right. <laughs> I love you too, Lucy. <laughs> so she, um, yeah, you guys, uh, embrace, and then, um, you know, she starts to cough a little bit. Oh. And so instantly, uh, she looks up at you, like, fearfully. She's like, is that, are we, is it here? Well, Brian gets up. All right. Oh, I will say, um, unlike uh, humans, because you don't really orgasm the same way, your blood point is still uh, active, shall we say. So uh, just keep that in uh, mind so for I this do scene. Have a weapon. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I assume your like your quarter staff is probably right next to the bed. All right, good. <laughs> so naked, I, I... fully erect, <laughs> and holding a quarter staff. <laughs> A true Celtic warrior. <laughs> <laughs> if you'll remember from your history 101. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so, I mean, do I see it? Is it in the room? Um, you don't see it in the room with you, no. Um, although, as you're looking around, um, you hear more coughing from inside the bed. And um, you start to feel a little uh, queasy as well. Fuck me. I have no idea what to do in this situation. The door is locked, yeah? Um, the door into the bedroom, yes. Is the balcony thing locked? Um, yeah. Well, I'll basically, I'll stand by, I'll stand by Lucy with the staff. All right. Until it shows up or something happens, I have no idea what else to do. Start so buffing up, I guess. Give me, yeah, buff up as much as you would like. You do have basically like a minute. All right. Um, so give me a perception plus alertness. Okay, one sec. Perception plus alertness is six. All right. So, you hear a scream from Lucy, but it's from below you, further into the house. Um, I look to where she's supposed to be. Yeah, you drop back the curtains on the bed, and she's no longer in there. Right. Break out of the room. Alright. Head towards where Actually, she is. Alright. 
So yeah, you hear her basically screaming, Ryan! Ryan, it's here! Yeah, I run to her with celerity. Alright. So, you, uh, bust into the sitting room where you hear the voice coming from, and you see, uh, Lucy huddled in the back corner, naked, terrified, and standing between you and her is the thing, and it looks... Charge it. It's looking directly at you. It doesn't seem to be paying attention to her at all. (laughs) Alright. Give me a a (laughs) dexterity plus melee. Uh, I'm not wearing my armor since I'm naked. So <laughs> no, you're not fully even naked. A specialty. <laughs> Actually, man, you know what? You know what? You know what? Give me a minute. <laughs> Ten with a specialty and a willpower point. <laughs> All right. Do you have any sort of like battle cry you want to issue as you run fully erected Slenderman with a quarterstaff to hit him? <laughs> <laughs> For the Empire! (laughs) Alright, you run forward and you slam this thing. And that is uh, where we are going to uh, end this session. Oh. This is our our to be continued. Alright. In classic. uh, That's unfortunate. Yeah, you don't know exactly whether it worked or not, but uh, you'll find out. Oh boy. Well, that was exciting. <laughs> yeah. That was a roller coaster of events and emotions. <laughs> yeah, I think Ryan's character just developed more in like the past session than uh, <laughs> in everything up until this point. He's living up to uh, the previous version of Ryan. Yeah. So, um, first off, what did you learn? Well, I certainly learned a lot about Slenderman. I learned that, uh, within the reasonable realms of possibility, excluding my usual paranoia, perhaps Lucy actually has feelings for Ryan. Mm hmm. Alright. That sounds yeah. pretty good. So, you get the experience point for that. Um, oh boy. I was basically my plan was just to give everyone the experience point award uh, point for these solo sessions, um, but in addition okay. to that, uh, for I was pretty impressed uh, with the way you handled Lucy, so I'm going to give you the extra special fifth experience point that I reserve for these situations. Oh boy, thanks. And then we're also at the end of a story. So if you can point to one time where you helped the entire party over the past several sessions at some point after um, you guys rescued the prince. Um, burglary. Alright, good enough. And you've certainly faced danger. Cool. So, um, in that case, you are coming away from this session with eight experience points. Wow. Damn. Um, you but don't. Spend them. You don't have the chance to spend them yet. No, unless um, you can spend them on um, Malkavian time. Malkavian time. Um, you can also spend them if you want to take. Um, there's actually another skill that I saw in a, another Malkavian book, um, Babel, which is the secret language of Malkavians. So that's a knowledge, I'm guessing. Um, yeah, I think so. Basically. <laughs> It's not written, it's like, it's not like a language per se. Basically, it's like, you know, insane scribblings. You could actually do them now, that Slenderman. You can actually do, like, just the circle with, like, the X through it. And because you're crazy, you could actually put your craziness into it, and another Malkavian that comes along with Babel could look at it and understand the message being conveyed through it. It's a code that's... uh, Yeah. That would be useful. The code is actually, like, impossible for non-Malkavians to break, because there is no code there. It's purely insanity communicating with insanity. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. Okay, so, um, abilities are two times current rating? Yes. And three points for a new one. 
Sure, why not? So I'm going to end the recording here. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and uh, we'll see you later. Bye-bye.